My name is James Hill. I have a PhD in physiological psychology. And for the past 30 plus years, I've really been interested in how people regulate their body weight, and particularly how we can deal with uh, prevention and treatment of obesity. As you know, obesity has become a big, big problem, not just in this country, but worldwide. And as weight continues to go up, I think we desperately need better strategies for preventing it and treating it once it's present. Uh, back in the early 1990s, Dr. Rena Wing, who's a very famous behavioral psychologist at Brown University and I, started the National Weight Control Registry. This now consists of over 10,000 people who have not just lost weight, but they've kept it off for a very long period of time. When we looked at the behaviors and the strategies they're using to keep weight off, that's where we saw a lot of similarities. Generally on the diet side, uh, the impressive thing is these people do eat a low-fat diet, and that's why now low-fat's a little out of vogue, and I keep coming back to the fact that the people we see who are succeeding are eating a low-fat diet. A low-fat, moderate-carbohydrate diet, they're eating about the same amount of protein as the typical Americans, although that varies a little. They eat a lot of fruits and vegetables, but they're very conscious of calories as well. So the diet side. Uh, another factor that we found is they eat breakfast every single day and that's been so impressive that we include that now as part of all of our treatment programs getting people to eat breakfast. They self-monitor. They weigh themselves on a regular basis. I know some people out there say, oh, don't, don't use the scale, throw it away. When we talk to these people, they simply say, how am I going to know I'm gaining weight if I don't weigh myself? Now what we find is they usually have a range, and that's usually two or three pounds, in which weight fluctuates from day to day. But when it goes above that, they have a plan. So it's not just their self-monitoring. They put a plan in action when their weight exceeds their higher limit. They don't take weekends off. They don't take holidays off. Very consistent in their diet. And then a, a very big and important behavior, I think, is the high level of physical activity we see. When you lose weight, you create a physiological drive to regain that weight. And that's been demonstrated in lots of ways. Hormones change, leptin changes, uh, substrate oxidation changes. So essentially, your physiology is working against you to push you to regain the weight. Now the depressing part of that is, in, at least in our animal models, that that never goes away. We keep these animals weight reduced their whole lives and that physiological pull to regain weight doesn't go away. So perhaps the situation is we have to create a behavior pattern that's strong enough to oppose the physiological drive to regain. And that's where I think high levels of phys physical activity can be very important in that. Most people, despite how they lose it, regain it over the next few years. And what we think that is, uh, is, is a behavior change problem. So it's not the lack of what to do, it's the lack of being able to do it. So there again, we went back to the National Weight Control Registry to see if we could learn a little bit more about why these people maintain these behaviors. So first of all, many of them changed professions. They actually became dietitians, exercise physiologists, maybe in some cases physicians. Okay? Now what you've done, think about that. You've tied your behaviors to something that's very important for you, making a living. They've changed where they live, to live in communities that are more walkable, etc. And uh, they've even changed spouses in many times, which is the support thing. They've made changes in their friends. Now again, that sounds dramatic. I'll give you one example. This is the guy who gained 50 pounds going out with his buddies for pizza and beer. And for some reason, he was motivated. He went and lost the weight. And he said, look, I know if I go back and hang out with that group of friends, I'm not going to be able to go in and have one beer and one bite of pizza. I'll be right back where I was before. So it's not that he got rid of his friends. What he actually did is to find a new group of friends that were uh, more interested in the behaviors that he was interested in. These people probably unconsciously have found a link with the behaviors they want to maintain and those things that are already so important in their life that they would never change 
or they create a situation to link them to things that are very important. So we're not fans of low carbohydrate diet. In fact, uh, a low carbohydrate diet is pretty good to take the weight off, but if you're going to be active, it's not providing the right kind of fuel uh, for your muscles. And what we found is uh, it's very hard to maintain that type of diet over time. At the end of the day, if you adhere to any diet, you can lose weight and keep it off. We're more and more interested in getting weight off, but we're interested in the overall health pattern of getting weight off. So just being at a low weight or a normal weight doesn't mean you're healthy. And that's why we're such big fans of physical activity. We're fans of addressing sleep and stress and even things like positivity and gratitude. More and more I see this concept of holistic wellness. And weight's a big part of it, but weight is not all of it. And so we see, I think a lot of people on the low carbohydrate diets, they get the weight off, they're not really well, and they have trouble keeping it off. So I'm not a big fan. I still think uh, we've dismissed dietary fat too much. Fat is the most calorically dense nutrient, and I think we have lots of research that shows that excess of fat is stored um, much more efficiently than any other nutrient. So we generally favor a low-fat diet. Unfortunately, what we're doing is exporting the American lifestyle around the world, and it produced obesity here, and it's effectively producing obesity anywhere we take it. And again, the problem with sorting that out is there's so many things going on at once, usually animal, uh, animal consumption of animal products, both fat and protein goes up. Uh, we change the composition of the carbohydrates. Physical activity goes down. Uh, in this kind of Western thing, usually stress is on the increase. You have all kinds of sleep problems. So I think this lifestyle disrupts so many things. I think it's difficult to point to one thing. I actually believe that what we're after is this balance of diet interacting with physical activity to achieve energy balance. I'm a big proponent of the fact that it's positive energy balance that leads to a lot of these problems. Positive energy balance means that over time you're taking in more calories than you expend. I, what I want to do really is to try to help people achieve energy balance at the healthiest possible body weight. So I do, I worry um, around the world that these populations are seeing an increase in obesity. China's seeing a huge increase in obesity. They're seeing it in the wealthy, they're seeing it in the urban areas where there are these huge changes in diet and physical activity. The more I've been around this field and the more I look at people who do change their lifestyle and change their weight, when you ask them what's so great about it, Health is in there, but it's never the first or second reason. They have more energy. In Colorado, they can go and climb a mountain. They can play with their grandkids. So one of the things that I think is a big motivation for making these lifestyle changes, yes, the weight will come along, but I really do think you maximize your happiness and maximize your overall quality of life. So my message is one of hope. It's not easy. If anyone tells you easy, it's easy. Run the other way. But every single person we work with, including 98% of people in the National Weight Control Registry, say that it's worth it.